Red Nation blogger back with another video. I got a very special guest, Bias Houston, a.k.a. Will, a.k.a. I don't know, man. He took the Rockets crown. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like it's on your head. I feel like you you a YN. You a YN. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, all, all, all respect to you, bro. Um, You're doing your thing. I always support y'all. Um, How you been first off and everything like that? How does it feel to be the official Rockets ambassador? Yeah, I appreciate that. It's crazy to hear that. Um, no, I've mm-hmm. been great, man. I, I'm, I'm enjoying the season so far. Um, content is going well, so um, can't complain about anything on that front, really. Um, and then, yeah, like the you said, I'm young, so to to be in the position I'm in right now at this age is is uh, it's a blessing. So I, I appreciate it. I, I ain't gonna lie, man. When I was your age, I wish that like one that Twitter was like it is now. Yeah. with the spaces and with the stuff. But then at the same time, I'm like, it was different in a way. It was like, it was different. It was good and it was bad. It was just a different world back then. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But it is what it is. I ain't that old. I ain't like that or nothing like that. But anyways, man, we're going to talk about these Houston Rockets. First of all, what's your impression through 10 games of the season? I said I wanted to get you on at the 10. What's your impression of the team as of right now? Um, I think we're in a good spot. I, I, I like where we are. I think we're... um. I don't know how the math stacks up, but I think we're on pace for about 48, 49 wins, which is around what I predicted for the team anyways. Um, and so, yeah, like I, I don't like the fact that we dropped that game against uh, Charlotte and then I hate the fact that we oh, let the Spurs beat us. But other than those two games, I'm, I'm fine. Like, you know, we yeah. want to beat the Warriors, but I'm fine with that. Uh, we beat two good teams. We beat the Mavericks, beat the Knicks. I think those are two really good teams that we beat. Um, we took care of business against Detroit. Um, should have been a bit more convincing of a win, but the the scoreboard says a win, so we'll take it. And then we took care of business, obviously, last night against the Wizards. So um, I think we're like we're we're right where we want it to be, um, and I, I think we have, we're in a really good position to kind of cement that uh, on Wednesday and on Friday against the Clippers. Yeah, I think you can make an argument. Uh, I know we talked about the losses; they got four losses. Yeah. Honestly, the Warriors, the Hornets, and the Spurs. Those games were like energy games, but they were flipped, if that makes sense. Like for me, the Rockets came out strong against the Hornets, but then the energy flipped. They lost. Then you got the Spurs. They didn't come out to play in the first half, and then they came out to play in the second half, but the hole too deep. They lose. Then against the uh, Warriors, again, they didn't come out to play. They come back from down 31. And then they don't execute at the end. Game goes to overtime. They lose in overtime. And it's like, golly, you know what I'm saying? So for me, it's, it was really frustrating seeing those three losses and how they were accumulated because all the wins, the West is crazy right now. Dallas is five and five and they're 11th or 12th in the West. Like it's crazy right now. You know what I'm saying? So every win matters. And for those wins to come down to how they came down, it, I just don't want them to bite back you know bite us in the, in the in the backside when we as the season progresses i just looked at the numbers before you got i got you on rockets are 16th in offense i i don't know i think that's around the same range that they were last year or something like that middle of the pack we were a little bit lower than that last year so a little bit lower okay like 21st not maybe not or 19th yeah, was, or something like that somewhere in the 20s, yeah. I think. So, yeah. yeah so it's 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 a little bit better you know but how are the Rockets winning these games with the three point with, with like with the three point shooting being what it is? Because uh, they rank twenty seventh in three point percentage right now. Yeah, yeah, and it's I mean that honestly that's higher than what I thought it was going to be. I thought it was going to say like twenty eight, twenty nine. Um, I said a lot last since I looked at. I told my bro I was talking to him earlier. I was like, we last in the league. And I was like, let me look yeah. it up real quick. Yeah, twenty seven. I mean, it looks that way. So I yeah. understand why you say that. Um, how we're winning, honestly, I it, it it comes down to the defense. I think. I don't know where we are right now, but I know at one point in time we did have a top three defense um, in the league. I don't know where it stacks up. Top three. We're, we're number th- okay, so that's yeah. – and it, that matches the eye test for me as well. Um, I think that's very much why we're winning games because the offense is struggling. Um, Jalen and Shingoon have both kind of had ups and downs in the season where they, mm-hmm. they've had the high highs and they both had some low lows. Mm-hmm. Um, Fred has been struggling the <laughs> entire season. Like he hasn't – he's had, I think, but one good game um, the entire year. The Knicks and the Spurs. Um, yeah, so like he's been struggling. So obviously, mm-hmm. when your three best offensive players are struggling, mm-hmm. like up and down, I think Shingo's kind of turned the corner now a little bit. But when they're struggling up and down like that, makes sense why the offense looks as stagnant as it does and looks as um, as bad, for lack of a better term, as, as mm-hmm. it does. Um, but I think what's keeping us in the games and what's ultimately helping us win them is the fact that 
we have some of the best defenders in the entire association. Um, a man in Tar specifically, like those two guys, uh, they're probably my favorite players on the team right now, just because of how much, yes, like they are. I don't. I've never seen guys carry a team defensively the way that they have been carrying the Rockets defensively this season. Um, mm. What Tari did against the Warriors, even though we lost that game, but to dig them out of a thirty-point deficit, sending in an OT off of just defense. Not even talking mm. about like you know. Usually, you would think a guy goes out there and like hits a bunch of threes and gets the team back mm. into a game, but like Tari did it off of just hustle and mm. blocking, stealing the ball, getting out in transition, stuff like that. So, um, and I, I feel like that that's kind of been the identity of the team this year. It's just, it ain't going to look pretty. The office may not look the best, but we're going to fight. Um, and that's what, that's what happened. They, they've been fighting. Yeah. I think uh, the only thing that could, the more similar, the closest comparison that I could give, and he was nowhere near the offensive player that these guys are is a 2018 Rockets with uh, Luke and Baamute before he yeah. dislocated his shoulder. That was a guy that I saw that the Rockets like, he changed games. So going just going off topic a little bit, when people say in that 2018 series, oh, the Warriors were missing Andre Iguodala, I'm like, bro, we was missing Luka by Mute. Then they Luke laughed. Changed and I'm the like, series, dog. he would have changed the series. He even it was stretches that season where Chris Paul was missing games and Luke was like running the one. He was initiating the offense. Like I remember that vividly in Utah. So definitely after he dislocated his shoulder that second time, it was all she wrote. He it was he was done. So I think that. Just that's the only example I could use for this current iteration with Ahmed Thompson and Tari Eason. I was in y'all spaces, I think it was either earlier today or maybe it was yesterday. Y'all was talking about how Ahmed is just so special and how much of a defender he is. And you were saying that maybe he could potentially be, if not already flat out, the best wing defender in the league. And I'm like, man, that's crazy because his biggest competition is on his team. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. I like the way Tari, Tari is really Kawhi Leonard-esque. It's yeah. really Kawhi, like guys are dribbling in front of him and he just take the ball from him. Like Kawhi's the only player, you know, like in recent memory that I can remember just somebody could be dribbling thinking that they got it. And he literally takes the ball, goes the length of the floor, dunks it or lay up and, or and one, whatever the case may be. And Tari seems like he's starting to become that. And it's like, wow, did the Rockets draft this guy? Is this a guy that's actually a Houston Rocket and not a San Antonio Spur, not a Golden State Warrior? Yeah. This is crazy. It's crazy to see us have one of those. And then you got Amen Thompson and it's like another guy. And like what I like about Amen, he's one of the most disciplined defenders in the league yep. you you're not going to get him a pump fake. he may have gotten got one time this year with a pump fake and that may have been against luca i can't remember it but, was not to cut you off but i can't no, remember it's cool. it was preseason or the regular season i can't remember what mm -hmm. game it was but it was a game I, it might have been preseason where he fell mm -hmm. for a pump fake and mm -hmm. i was like ah don't fall for the pump fake and man you was doing yeah. so good and then he's just so athletic he just goes right back up and contests and i'm like all right never mind yeah. like yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. you, you can. He got you a can quick fall. second jump. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. So it's just like with him, it's like seeing that on this team. It's like I see the gripes of people wanting to put Tari in the starting lineup, and I hear that. But it's like, man, losing that off the bench would be crazy because him and yeah. our man are like a pair. You know, people call oh, them yeah, the Terror Twins. Like yeah, they call them the Terror Twins. So it's like seeing how they are and people call them the Terror Twins. I don't want to break that up at all. So yeah, man. Like for me, I'm just excited. Uh. Ime Udoka, man, listen, um, I like Ime. I think that he's a good coach. I think that we kind of get confused with the Celtics. Not only, I heard you say that they have smart players. Not only did they have smarter players, more experienced players that been through the fire way before Ime even took control, but they also had Will Harris, who's now the head coach in Utah, and they had Joe Mazzula also on that staff. So they had the three-point, you know what I'm saying? Obviously, Ime was in control, so they still had his fingerprints on there mostly. But he had offensive steps. We need an offensive guy on this team. Or is it just we not hitting shots? Which one is it? It's a bit of both to me. Mm -hmm. um, I think that we're like guys to put it politely guys who are supposed to make threes are not making them. We were already never going to be like the best three point shooting team in general. Right. Cause we don't have like Amin Thompson. I love him to death. Not really shooting right now. Um, Jabari Smith jr. Um, he's, he's very inconsistent. Dylan Brooks <laughs> inconsistent. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, and then you, you, you compound that with like Fred Van Vliet and Jalen green. Those are guys who are supposed to be pretty good shooters. Um, I think Fred is shooting like 25, 28% from three this season, which is That's insane ugly. considering I think he shot like 39% last year. I'm not mis mistaken, somewhere in that ballpark. Um, so to see him regress to the, you know, the degree that he has. And then like I said, Jalen Green, 
um, has initially shot the best. He's he's had you know some really high high games and started shooting really well. And then some guy, games like last night where uh, he didn't shoot the best from three. Um, yeah. And so when you have like an already a team that was already not going to be the best at shooting the three ball anyways, and then the guys on that team aren't even shooting it the way they're supposed to, like yeah, it's it's going to look very very bad. And that's one of the reasons why we're where we rank uh, in three point percentage. Yeah. Um, but I also yeah. think that it's both. I think it's both that, and I think it's also the fact that um, the offense is very, very basic. Um, and I, I think that our players are ready for more. I think that last season when Ime took over, I understood why he kind of brought in – why he brought in Fred, who, you know, slowed us down um, and made sure we got into our sets. And, you know, the offense was, wasn't anything complicated back then, but I understood why because it's like these guys are 20 years old, 21, 22 – um, and they're coming off of, you know, two years of Steven Silas where they're being taught like what not to do on a basketball court. So now this is their first time with structure. This is their first time like this is what you're supposed to do. So I understand why you want to bring bring those guys along slowly. Right. They look like they're they look like they got that down. Looks like they're ready for a little bit more um, this season. And we're kind of still seeing the offense look as basic as it did last year. Um, I do uh, you know point the finger a little bit at Eme. I think he has to, yeah. you know. Except that maybe maybe that's not his strong suit. Maybe he needs to get somebody in on the coaching staff who uh, is a bit more offensively inclined. I, I always I love the um, the analogy of like Mike D'Antoni and Jeff Zellick from that 2018 Rockets team. Oh yeah, earlier, that's a good analogy. Where yeah. you know D'Antoni was the offense and Bazilek was the defense, and I thought mm-hmm. that like duo worked perfectly. So I think Ime needs to find his version of that. Like except, except instead of being the offensive head coach, he's a defensive head coach. He's the final gotcha. offensive head coach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but then also, I think another part of the problem is, and it, it, I hate to just point fingers and blame one person, but I do think that Fred Van Vliet is holding this team back in, in, in wow. certain areas. Um, I don't, I'm not ready to say that he's trade. You got to trade him right now. Cause yeah. I do think that he uh, has had a rough start to the season. And I, I'll trust that he'll, he'll figure it out as the season goes on. But through the, I think he's played 10 games for us. I think cause that was, a game eleven yesterday. So, oh, oh yeah, it's eleven. So Cause, ten because yeah, he's only right. missed one. So he's played ten games this season, and like I said, he one or two games of those ten where I, I think we've been better with him on the court than with him off of it. Um, in terms of like the, he slows the pace down. I think the ball kind of takes a bit more when he's on the court. We we've seen obviously it was in short uh, spurts, but we've seen what the team looks like uh, when Fred would go to the bench and the ball would start moving again. Um, yeah, and so. Yeah, like I said, I, I'm not going to blame it all on him. I th- and I, I think he has to just be better in general for the offense to look better. But I think those are kind of like the two biggest reasons why the offense doesn't look as good as we want it to. That's a lot. Uh, honestly, on Fred Van Fleet, I see the – I know you probably saw the guy, uh, Binkley Hoops, first regular season yeah. game he missed. The Rockets turned the ball over a season high 21 yeah. times and had a season low five made threes. I think they only generated 21 three-point looks overall. So that's another, uh, I guess, Fred Van Fleet stat. So there is some – but. For the most part, I'm with you on Fred Van Fleet. He's been wilding this year. He's been bugging. <laughs> Seven attempts, 28% from three. He's been bugging. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I 100% true. agree with you. But, you know, and just to go to the Emay point, I think that Emay, he lost us the Warriors game, in my opinion. Yeah, he did. He and he lost us the OKC game. I, I honestly firmly believe that because you have to see the first four minutes of the Warriors game, you could see they were up like 14 points quick. You have to see that, and you have to make the adjustment. You have to make the subs. Your ro- your regular rotation, if you care about the game, your regular rotation, go out the window, adjust quickly before it gets out of hand. Then to go to the – but then he played Steven Adams. Steven Adams was waving that guy. Like, like that's not a that's not a Steven Adams game. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, exactly. And, wait, I don't even – I think I'm getting my games. I was talking about the OKC game but because Steven Adams didn't play in the Golden State game. But Jabari came out slow. Right. So you got to make these adjustments quicker. And in regards to the OKC game, you he put in Steven Adams and had Alex Caruso, who I know going into that game was three of 21 from three on the yeah. season. But, bro, he's a 36 percent career three point shooter, like just at least get a hand up for you to just collapse the paint. He's not playing defense. So and then he's hitting three. So now he's hitting the all threes on the offensive end, which is moving the scoreboard in OKC's favor. And then on the offensive end, we can't get anything going because you in the way and they not respecting you. Now it's ugly for us. Now we get outscored in the second quarter, 44 to 20. That's all she wrote. Because the game was close every single quarter after yeah. that. <laughs> you know what yeah. I'm saying? So I think, boy. yeah. And then y'all said, and I didn't even notice because I was so like irritated watching the game, but the Warriors game. Y'all was like, oh, Sengun was playing well. He should have put Sengun back in. He could have been scoring. And I didn't 
come away after that game, I didn't come away with thinking Sengun played well until after I listened to y'all. And I was like, oh, because I like Jabari at the five when we play a team that's like that. When we play a team that's like that, I like that. I was going to say, I actually, I, I, I have a, I don't say a unique opinion on that because I know mm-hmm. people were like, Shingo should have played. I don't think that Ime lost us the game by keeping Shingon on the bench. I think he lost us the game by taking Fred back into the game. Because I yes, know, I Reed was playing well. I was that's what I was gonna say. Reed, <laughs> that because the lineup, like Shingun was obviously on the court when the comeback started. So like I'm not gonna sit here and say that, that Shingun didn't play well yeah, in the second for sure. half. He did. He, he and, yeah. and and I obviously in overtime, if you're gonna mm-hmm. st- check your starters back in, but everyone it's everyone but Alper and Shingun, like Shingun should have been yeah. on the court in overtime. So like I I or like uh at the end of the game when like guys started fouling out, that's when I would have pushed them back in. But mm-hmm. in that fourth quarter run where we brought it coming back in the game, I think what killed the momentum and killed us is putting Fred and Lee back into the game. When like I said, respect for that, I, I appreciate Fred. Do not you know, come off as a Fred hater. He wouldn't he wasn't playing well that game. Just just being frank. He was not playing well that game. Um and I thought the team played better when he was on the bench. The the lineup that got us back, if I'm not mistaken, it was like Aaron Holiday. Reed Shepard, Amin Tari, and Ambari at the five. I think that was the yes. five that kind of mm-hmm. started that fourth quarter and went on a run. And mm-hmm. I think what made that lineup work so well was um, one, you know, outside of maybe like Reed Shepard, everybody in that lineup is somewhat a positive. Like I think Aaron Holiday is a positive on defense. And obviously we know Bari, Amin, and Tari, especially that game, mm-hmm. they were for sure positives on defense that mm-hmm. game. Um, and so like it was just guys, like offense wasn't pretty. But they were getting out in transit. They were causing havoc in the in the defensive half court set, getting out in transition, scoring there. If they got to the half court set on offense, they would, you know, they were just barreling to the rim. And if they missed, a man and Tar were grabbing the rebound. rebound, going right back up with it. And that would and like that sounds nasty. That that strategy <laughs> will probably never work ever again. But on that particular night, it, it was, was working. It was working. And so for working. me, it's like if that's what's working, I'm gonna lean into that. And that doesn't sound like Fred Van Vliet. So to check him back yeah. in the game. Where not only is like because part of the problem too is when he checks in the game, he's not like it's not Fred dominating the ball anymore. It's it's still the same thing. A minute Tari barely downhill, so it's like okay, well if he's going to be out there, but he's not playing point guard, what is he doing? Because on defense, he's getting picked on. The Warriors are every Absolutely. every time down, they're they're targeting Fred. So if he's yeah. not going to handle the rock on offense, which he shouldn't because he wouldn't have it going that night, and he's getting picked on defensively, why is he in the game? And so for me, yeah. it's like I think if Fred just I think if we leave the five that was leading that comeback in, maybe maybe put Dylan Brooks in for that, you know, the this just supreme lean into defense and lean into the chaos aspect of it. I think we don't even go to overtime. I think we just went into regulation. But Man, yeah, that's how the I ball think. stick. The ball was sticks more with Fred too. Reed, even though we want him to shoot, everybody in the in the fan base wants him to shoot. The one thing that he was doing that night was that's moving the ball, and he didn't even play bad. Like I can understand if he made a mistake, made a turnover, yeah, lost, really. missed an assignment. He was locked in, so I was like, I didn't really understand why he may made that sub, which is why I thought he had blackmail on him because I was like, there's no reason for him, like for real, there's no reason for you to make yeah. that sub at that time when considering even like Jalen shouldn't have even been in. Like he yeah, wasn't playing well. He air, he airballed a three, hit the side of the backboard, like anything. But that game, and I want to segue into the Jabari thing because. Everybody's kind of down on him, and me too. That game, Jabari was five of thirteen from three. That was probably one of the, some of the most shot attempts that he's gotten this season. Um, that gave me the idea that maybe if they do make a lineup change, the big doesn't need to be Landell. It doesn't need to be Stephen Adams. It should be Jabari Smith at the back of five, and that can get him more. I feel like maybe of a flow and a pick and pop you know what i'm saying and and just you play more five out and the ball will find him more maybe what do you think about that i, no, I like that idea like i, I mm-hmm. was saying um especially like on nights where steven adams because he's probably not gonna ever play back to backs this year he's probably gonna like mm-hmm. if he feels feeling so on shooter he's probably not gonna suit up that night so he's not gonna play an 82 game season obviously so like especially on those nights because respectfully i don't think lando has it um I would just not play Lando. I would just let Jabbar register the backup five minutes. Um, and I agree with you 100%. I think that is an area where he could find his rhythm because it, in those lineups, we could cater a bit more of the offense to him. Because, you know, maybe. Yes. I don't know what's going on with Jabbar. Maybe it's mental. Maybe his confidence isn't where it, it should be. And I think God, giving him an opportunity like that to, like, all right, it, this is this is on you. It might be, just be like the two-man game between you and Jalen. Y'all get it going. 
Uh, maybe that's an area where he can kind of start getting his confidence and his swag back. And then like, then we can start kind of scaling him back up. Uh, cause yeah, cause you're right. It is, um, it's not looking good for Jabari right now. I'll, nah, I'll put it like that. So nah. yeah, I, I no, I like that idea. That's a, that's a really good idea. Could it be a, a situation of what Jalen went through last year? Like if you notice last year, even though Jabari did get benched, I'm not going to say he never got benched last year. It wasn't like Jalen got benched last year. Jalen got benched a lot last year yeah. and he should have, yeah. but I think this year is it Jabari being benched because they trying to, do him like Jalen, or is it just that Tari? I, it's probably more because Tari and Amen have just been that awesome. But I think that maybe this is Jabari's year to be torn down and then built back up, like how they did Jalen in his year three. We are, we all thought, oh, Jalen's gonna make this year three jump, especially with Udoka. Udoka. And Udoka was like, no, we're gonna tear him down and then we're gonna build him back up. And then boom, in March, he came and you know, he became what he was, and then. This offseason, he started. I mean, well, this the start of the season, he started really, really good, and he's kind of regressed a, a, a lot, in my opinion. I think he's starting yeah. to show more of what he was last season earlier on, and that's kind of scaring me a little bit. So, it could it be that potentially with Jabari, or like you said, is it just something that's mental? Honestly, man, I don't know what's like, I don't know what's going on with Jabari because, like, to me, the uh, like the problem with him is. He's missing threes and he's missing them kind of bad. Like it's not yeah. like it's not like he's shooting them and they're like rimming out. Like he shot a couple. I think he took like six even his midi not even his midi night. not as consistent. And I did. I think he made one, and then the rest of them, maybe one of them hit the rim. The other other like five <laughs> or so. Man, I mean, he he was hitting like all glass, and I'm like, Damn. all right, man. Like I don't know what's going. So I don't know if that's a mental thing i don't know if it's a that's just not his game anymore thing i yeah. don't know what's going on with jabari um because mm. he doesn't look like he don't even look like the player he was last year that that to me that's the all that's really concerning is like it looks like he's taking a step back because I, I thought he took a, a real step forward last season especially considering where he mm. started his rookie season and mm. then the second season i thought he was actually like pretty solid obviously it wasn't like all-star you know nothing that you would like really write home about but in terms of like a, just a good like like star in his role. I thought he did a pretty good job of doing that last season, and then like this season, it's, it's like I said, he's not making threes. I think the defense, particularly last night, could have been better. Um, so yeah, I don't man. know. Um, but but in terms of like his minutes, like yeah, I, I mean, I I love the idea of maybe scaling his minutes back a little bit and then dividing that between the men and Tari because they do look ready right now. They look amazing right now. Um, and the team is clearly better when they're on the court. Um, and so, yeah, I would maybe start if, if Barry is starting to look like this, I am yeah. definitely down with like kind of scaling his minutes back. Yeah, man. 11 points per game, 39 percent from the field, 25 percent from three effective field goal percentage of 45 percent. Yeah, man, it's it's not it's not looking good. Career low in rebounds, career low assists, blocks, everything. Like just yeah. down the board, minutes, like everything, man. This this it's sad. I I'm <laughs> you know, I, it's sad. Like honestly, yeah. and I just feel foolish because when he was getting drafted and I saw y'all at that draft party that day, and we was at post Houston. Yep. And I everybody was like Paolo. And I was like, Oh yeah, I like Paolo. At that time we still had Kevin and we still had Jalen though. And I was like, that's another guy that need the ball. And I'm looking at Jabari's highlights and I'm like, Oh, he's shooting off the catch. He pulling. I'm like, yeah. this is what you need. That's a floor spacer. So I'm thinking that's going to translate. It hasn't translated at all, man. It hasn't translated one bit. I mean, he, his best shooting season was last season at what? 36% from 36 three on five attempts. Points. And that's, and that's still not it's good okay, enough. okay, but it's that's not still elite. Not, yeah. 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 It's not elite. That's, that's Dylan Brooks. We didn't draft you to be Dylan Brooks shooting. We drafted you to be 43% from Auburn shooting. You know what I'm saying? So, um, I guess last point, man, last point that we get out of here. What do you think is the Rockets ceiling this year in terms of, uh, Playoffs, first, second round, um, play in. What do you think is their ceiling? So I think so. Like this is not what I think is going to happen. This is just best case scenario, right? Okay. Best. So best case scenario. Um. I think I think like I think we're like not even best. Case, I think this team is going to be a playoff team. I don't think I don't think we're okay. going to be playing. I think, I think we're going to be in the playoffs. I, but I think we're going to be like a six seed. That's kind of where I think we're going to be. Um, okay. And then in terms of the ceiling, it depends on who we draw. I could see them pushing them to like six or seven. 
I don't think that we win. Um, just because like it's young teams can be their first time in the playoffs. And like you you see how uh young teams usually don't do too well in their first time around just because like it's it's a different game and you have to learn yeah. that game. And the only way to learn it is to play in the playoffs. Um and so yeah, I don't think they're gonna win be- because youth and inexperience is gonna take over. But I think that depending on who we draw in that first round, I think we could like I think Orlando push Cleveland to like six or seven. 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 Yes. And I think we can do something like that with how Orlando did last year where they push uh, a solid team to like six or seven games. Okay. Uh, but they're, I think they're going to lose though. But that that's that's like <laughs> yes. best case. I think like yeah. realistically we might go there and might get handled. So I, I don't know. But I, I, said, think I, playoffs, I thought based on how Jay, this was based on how Jaden was playing in, in March. Yeah. I thought carrying that over, especially how he looked the first few games and Dallas Hornets, everything like that. I was like, oh, this is a 50 win team. Yeah. They're going to probably lose yeah, in the first round. Candy. Yeah, they're going to lose in the first round. And, you know, at the best, they're going to lose in the second round. And then we're going to be building from there. I'm not so sure now with this offense. This offense is disgusting. It's really disgusting. Yeah. Last night, they only put up 107 versus Washington. I was like, come on, bro. Like, come on, man. But I did lie. One last thing. Yeah, go ahead. Giannis, there's a lot of stuff going on. They say that um, we have the highest odds outside of OKC, but I don't think OKC is going to trade for Giannis because they're winning. Like they don't, they don't care. They're not going to blow that up. So, who would you be willing to give up for Giannis? And do you think that it's even a realistic possibility? Um, so I'll take the the last question first. I think it is okay. realistic. Um, yeah, me too. Me too. I, I think that is it's definitely something that could happen. Um. Like I said, I don't think OKC is going to be interested in that. I think they're going to – if I was OKC, I, and it sounds going to sound crazy, I would – I don't know if I would do it. I think they have a good mm-hmm. thing going, and I think I would kind of – Yeah, that's, that, that would be crazy for them out. to do. Yeah, yeah especially like if they're going – if like Shed Holmgren has to be in the trade, I would – crazy it sounds, I would I would say no. Um, but, yeah, so at least Houston, um, I don't want to trade Shingon. I'm going to be real with you. I, I, I would – I would at least try to make that do or work before I, I give up on Shingun. Um And then, like, I think a and Tari, I, the spacing is going to be terrible. Untouchables. Untouchables. Yeah, but me. it's like I struggle to put those guys in a trade, too. Uh, and so that kind of leaves everybody else. Um, the thing with Giannis <laughs> for me is, I, I, I think one, he's obviously a great player. Like, he's probably at his best top three, top five in the league, like, he can obviously be the for best sure. runner team that wins the championship, right? So, like, obviously the end goal of a rebuild would be to get a guy like that. And he's mm-hmm. – I think he's 29, so he's not even, like, old. Like, he has, a, you know, in theory, a good three, four, five more years of, like, being one of the best guys in our league before he kind of phases out. The for part sure. that concerns me a lot about him is his knee health. And, like, the yes, fact – Yes, he's had two like, procedures, I think, the last yeah. two off seasons. Yep. I, people don't know that. He kept it quiet, but he's had two pr- new, yes. two knee procedures. The one he had in 2023, I think he got his knee scoped. Um, I think that's yeah. what the procedure was. And, like, he missed time. I think he missed – he missed all of this year's playoffs. Or like the 20 playoffs. playoffs right? And yep. I think he missed, like, four or some games in the one before that, if I'm not mistaken. I know he missed time in – twenty. was at 2023. Yeah, I think he missed time in the 2023 20, playoffs, yeah. if I'm not mistaken. So, like, that's two back-to-back seasons where he's missed time due to injuries. Um, with it with his knees at that and then like i said he's he's had surgery on him um and then the thing about Giannis is his game is very much like predicated on athleticism like one of the reasons why i think kevin durant was able to come back from was it it was was achilles i believe i think the reason katie was able to come back from his achilles is because like katie's game is just he's just the best like skill wise he's the most skilled guy on the court like he's not jumping higher than you dunking over you He's not running faster than you. He's just killing you methodically. Giannis is the complete opposite. His game is very much predicated on being the strongest, fastest, tallest guy on the court. And if you take away that athleticism and he's no longer the strongest and no longer the fastest on the court, how good is he? Especially considering how much he's like, if if his knees are really a problem, like that might become an issue as he gets older. And so his prime may not be as long as you would, you know, want it to be for someone who's just 29 years old. Like it, could be another three years, and that might be that might be it. So, I am hesitant to trade for yeah. Giannis until I I know more about his health because I mm-hmm. it, it does scare me. I think there's a world where this guy is, like I said, has about another like three years 
of being where he's at, and then his knees might just like take over as he gets up there in age. So that's kind of why I, I love Giannis. I would love him in the uniform, but I know it's gonna take the I know it's gonna take a lot to get him. Um, mm-hmm. And if we paying that price for a guy who may not have that much time, much longer left, being where he's at in the league, I, it makes me a little scared to do it. So. Yeah, so I went back and checked the 2023 uh, playoffs versus Miami. I think they lost in the first round. Yeah, they yeah. did because Miami went to the finals. Uh, he only played three games that series. Yeah, yeah, so he was out for that series. I'm going to surprise you. I'm just, for the sake of argument, I'm going to say Giannis is healthy. No knee problems. Yeah. Knee procedures, cool. No knee problems, though. No, nothing that's going to be crazy to his career. This is going to, this might trip you out. So just bear with me. Yeah. I don't want Amen and Tari to be traded whatsoever. I think those are guys that you absolutely need to win a championship. I agree. I, that's just my opinion. Singoon, I don't want him traded. Uh, you would probably need Fred to match salary. So, yeah. and But I don't, I don't know. I'm nervous about this guy because he's giving me mixed signals. I would probably have Jalen Green in there, man. I would, I would <laughs> probably be willing to move on and then just move Cam Whitmore up. Not to say that he's because Cam is not better. You know what I'm saying? He has a lot to work on. He's very raw. He's tunnel vision. He's Russell Westbrook-esque with the tunnel vision. But just because Jalen is, he not consistent. I need Jalen to be a consistent 22 to 24 point per game score on good efficiency every single night, in my opinion. You know what I'm saying? It needs to be so consistent that when you have an off night, we don't lose a wink of sleep or have to worry about it yeah. because we know yeah, you're a reliable right. score. Yeah. We know that. And Jalen hasn't shown that outside of that stretch in March. And I can't have that once a month. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, Or like I can't have that one month out the season. Like I got to have that consistently. And he's already underneath 20 points per game. He's struggling from the field. He does. He, his mid range is not there. You know, his three point bag, he can hit the three and streaks and that's cool. I love it, but it's like, I, I just, I don't know. He's not polished enough for me for him to be in year four, for him to be the shooting guard. He's not a polished enough score. I love him. But I just think that if that was the biggest trading chip that we could do without having to include Singoon, Amen, and Tari, but we lose Jalen, I would be cool with it, unfortunately. And I, I, I thought you thought I was going to disagree with you. I don't disagree yeah. with anything you said. No, I, <laughs> yeah, the, only, just, Michael, I, the only thing I disagree with what you said was uh, I think Cam has to go, too, in that scenario. I, I would okay. imagine he's probably in the trade as well. Um, but no, The only I thing I say about that, we wouldn't have a two necessarily. Yeah, I, yeah. I think you have to. I, I I don't know how you would. I think they're gonna want a lot for Giannis, and if we're saying, of course, the Shingun, Amin, and Tari, if we Jabari can get Cam, I would love it. Yeah, Jabari too. Like, yeah, you but I, I, I don't I don't know how you would acquire him without giving up something that you care about, and we have, like so. Those are three guys who I do I'm not giving up one of the biggest pieces that I care about, Jabari. I know it's I mean yeah. Jabari, Jalen, Jalen. I'm that's the big. In my opinion, trade chip. You know what I'm no, saying? I, I forgot, he, would was the, it, he would be the centerpiece of the trade for sure. Was um, it Isaiah or his? No, it wasn't neither one of them. It was um, I watched the Player's Choice. He was listing things that Jalen Green has done in the 2020. Oh class. yeah, that was Mars. How yeah. young? Yeah, Mars. How young he was? Sixth player to do this. Five, fifth fast player. To do, he is the. It's there. So that special. Jabari not doing that. Jabari not doing that. So Jalen is doing that. So I'm thinking. That's something that I like. And then Jabari. I still like Jabari. I'm not, you know, trying to kill him or nothing. I like Jabari, but, yeah, I just don't want Sengun. I'm in Atari to go. I want yeah, to keep Reed, too, low-key. I want to keep yeah, Reed. I, I think it would be the fourth. <laughs> yeah. of, if I could keep four guys, it would be those four. So They can have Aaron Holiday. I, you know, oh, I would, have, I would love yeah, that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, go ahead and go, man. You know what I'm saying? But, hey, hey, Bias, thank you yeah. for coming on, bro. I appreciate you, dog. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. And, uh Probably meet you at one of the games this season, man. I plan. I want to go to the Friday's game, to the NBA Cup game. There. I really do. Yeah, you'll be there. Okay, yeah. I'm gonna try to get. I'm waiting on my plug to get back to me, but <laughs> he 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 taking his time, yeah. man. But all right, y'all. Thank y'all for watching. Please like and subscribe. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Renation Blogger out.